If you get cancer or you get any disease, people don't look down on you. They don't try to shame you. The patient doesn't feel ashamed. But when you become an addict, it's an ugly word. And the general public thinks you're a bad person. And maybe you deserve what you got. You really have to see your loved one get sick before you know the full truth of that statement. I think one of the challenges with addiction is that for years, we weren't talking about what the real science was, that this was a medical condition. And part of that was because we couldn't see what was actually happening in the brain. We were looking at the symptoms of addiction. Families were watching a loved one who just couldn't seem to stop using. We would never look at a loved one who was struggling, for example, with an asthma attack and say, why don't you just breathe normally? The same is true with addiction. When you look at someone who's struggling with addiction and you say, why don't you just stop using? That's asking someone having an asthma attack to just make themselves breathe normally. We have to make sure that we actually look at the science and that will begin to take away the stigma of addiction. What you struggle with when you struggle with opioid addiction is that your brain is chemically dependent on those opioids. Your brain is releasing chemicals, craving those opioids. What happens when they take that pill is it changes the brain. Their brain chemistry is changed and their life is forever changed. The brain has this center that is natural and we want it to be there. It's called the reward center. And the reward center is the reason why when I eat a cheeseburger, I get a, a sensation of happiness. And that's why I eat another cheeseburger later on. It's because my brain has remembered, oh, that was a positive experience. You should do that again. It does that on purpose because the brain wants me to eat. The reward for that is small. When you take an opioid, it does the same thing, but it does it much, much stronger. And it lays down new pathways in your brain. And that causes you to seek out the substance again. These drugs act on a receptor. Whenever I injured myself, the body releases a substance called endorphins. Those endorphins bind to those receptors in the brain to block pain temporarily. Opioids have hijacked that natural system and they do it so much better. So you're feeding yourself more pain medicine to try and get that same feeling, and you're always chasing your brain. So it tells me that Mother Teresa taking these medications would get addicted. It's not a personality flaw, it's not a character flaw. This is a, a biological mechanism that happens. If a patient has been on an opioid with a high enough dose for a long enough period of time, when they try and come off, there are acute symptoms that they'll experience, which many of us think of as a sort of a flu-like illness. People feel like they're going to die when they're running out of, of opioids. Your brain is telling your, your body to seek out this substance just like it should seek out food and water and everything else you need to survive. The problem, though, is the priority. When you eat food, your body sends out a signal saying, hey, you should do that again sometime. But when it's with opioids, it sends it out that you need this immediately. And so there's a lot more priority on it. As you descend further into addiction, you really start to displace everything in your life to prioritize the addiction. If we took the brain and drew a line, we could divide it just easily into two parts. The prefrontal cortex, which is the part of our brain that is responsible for our learning and our judgment and our reasoning ability and all those things. Well, the limbic system is the more primitive, responsible for sex instinct and hunger and thirst and those kinds of things. Addiction sort of hijacks the limbic system of our brain, the part of our brain that's responsible for pleasure and euphoria. When that part of the brain is triggered, the, the instincts, the impulses, are very significant. And so what we think happens is the prefrontal cortex, the things I should be telling myself about why I shouldn't take this. I'm sober six months, I'm just about to get custody, you know, I'm doing well at work, I'm doing this, I'm doing... The, that part of the brain that should come into play does not come into play. It's right there with eating and hydrating and sex instinct and aggressive instinct. You know, it is like drawing breath. It's gonna happen, you gotta do it. If you've not ever grappled with this deal, that is unimaginable. Because for most of us, we go throughout the day fighting off impulses, whether it's, you know, another 
slice of pizza or another Coke or another whatever. And so we cannot begin to grasp what it must be like to not suppress an urge. To, to be addicted by definition means that those instincts are, are now screaming that you must get that substance inside of you. And it has no rationality to it. So in every way, it is an illness. I think it's just hard for us to fathom because we, as humans, have this belief in control. And, and evolved people have it, and those that are not as evolved don't. And I think we kind of see it that way, that if you were, you know, if you had more willpower, if you were raised better, if you, uh, whatever, that you could exercise control over this. And, and I promise you, none of my patients suffer from lack of willpower. And science proves that opioids are addictive. These drugs did what they were designed to do. They changed the chemistry of the brains of millions of people. Their stated objective was to kill pain. They've caused far more pain than they've helped. On the next episode of Killing Pain. Uh, the United States has never experienced a drug addiction epidemic like the one we're experiencing today. So how did we get here? Doctors were sold a bill of goods saying that these were not addictive. If you don't think you're doing any harm, then what is the reason for not giving them? We were responding to a brilliant, multifaceted marketing campaign. They did it to make money. And make money they did. 